coming this evening. Uh, this is our uh, this is our sixth meeting. Pleasure. Um, just to survey the people here. Anybody here? Anybody here who hasn't been here to one of the hearings before? Well, I'm going to ask you to take an oath if you're going to speak. If you think you're going to speak. <laughs> Otherwise, most of the people I recognize faces, so I wasn't going to do that for them. But anyway. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeal will hold a continuance of a public hearing in the Great Room <coughs> at Pleasant Street Center, 49 Pleasant Street, Red Mass, on Wednesday, February the 20th, 2019, at 7 o'clock. On petition of Eden Lakeview Development, LLC, who seeks a comprehensive permit to develop 86 units of rental housing on 4.33 acres of land that is partially in a residential zone and partially in an industrial zone under Mass General Laws, Chapter 40B, Section 20 through 23, with waivers from zoning requirements on the property comprising six parcels of land. And I've said this so many times, I'm not going to repeat it again, but there's six parcels of land. Um, I would ask anyone this evening who has not been here before, who think they may wish to speak tonight, to please stand and raise your right hand. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> We got some. Good. If you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and the answer is I do. Okay. See, it didn't hurt at all. Okay. Um, basically, uh, the board this evening uh, just received, uh, some of us just received, or I got mine earlier, just received uh, the latest draft of the decision plus the architectural plans and a statement from the architect um, and a few other um, documents, I think. Um, I'd first welcome back Ted. Um, thank you for uh, returning. We didn't know about uh, what, where you were and if you were still moving along. We heard you were, so that was good. Jesse told us you were in good straits. Um, so, we have, um, last meeting was the 24th, I believe, um, of January, and the intent was uh, to continue this until February the 20th, and you had given us an extension of 30 days, which I believe is up on the 25th of March. Um, we would like to conclude this as, pos as soon as possible to stay within our uh, safe harbor regulation. Um, however, I think to be fair to the board, um, yep. having just received this this evening, uh, I don't perceive that we're going to be able to take a vote and move forward. And I think that we'll go over some of the issues um, that were presented the last time and some of the things that are presented in the draft decision that was with, you, with us tonight. And you might wish to... Uh, Give us a rundown on that first, as well as the updated uh, list of waivers that you request, because that has been changed too. So why don't I start out uh, with you, Ted, and you can give us a summary, more or less, of what we had before us. Unless, uh, perhaps it might make sense for Andrew to kind of review what, what has transpired and yeah. I'm happy to speak. Sure. Um, so thank you all again for coming. Uh, last we met was January 24th, where we went over some small revisions to the building envelope and the bedroom counts, where some one bedrooms were transformed into two bedrooms. Um, since then, a lot has happened, and we've been working hard and diligently to get all of this information out to you. I apologize that the draft decision was not posted. We had only just finished the revisions right before the meeting and I will post it tomorrow. Um, but since January 24th, the Conservation Commission issued their order of conditions on the project that happened on February 14th. Today, we had received 
I will call them revised architectural, architectural plans, but what they do is highlight where the affordable units are located, which we had asked for at the last hearing. Uh, we have received some revised engineering plans uh, and site plans that some of the parking has been modified that we will review today. And yes, we did get some supporting documents in the expected materials list to be used during construction. We had received the operations and maintenance plan for the development, which includes parking plan. And we had re received a revised waiver list from the applicants, which was updated just to match the new revisions on the site plan, parking numbers, etc. So I believe John, the chair is right. We will let the applicants start with their small division, revisions and run through the plans. The board can question and discuss further, and then we can get to the draft decision and start working our way through that again. If that sounds good to you guys, we can proceed. First of all, let me say that uh, we really appreciate uh, the efforts of, of uh, Andrew, Gene, and the entire staff uh, working with us uh, the last few weeks. Uh, they have been extremely uh, helpful in having us organize what we needed to bring before you tonight. And the draft of the decision uh, that you have before you uh, is as a result of many meetings uh, and phone conferences between our team uh, and uh, Andrew, Gene, and, and the rest of the, of the staff. So that what you have in front of you uh, is basically a, a result of a great deal of, of effort, a great deal of negotiation uh, to put a document before you uh, that meets with our approval and meets with the town's approval. And uh, I'm going to think what I would like to do is to highlight two, what I see as the two major issues. I think the remaining issues uh, uh, really are for your consideration and we, we agree with you, Mr. Chairman, that it would be unfair for the board to get this decision tonight uh, and expect to uh, read it tonight and vote on it tonight. So we have no problem uh, in the board taking it uh, and then uh, you know, having another meeting where hopefully an uh, official vote can be taken. But I did want to emphasize that what you have in front of you is as a result of a great deal of effort on the town's part uh, and uh, you know, a great deal of input uh, from, uh, from our team. And again, I want to say that uh, we're very much appreciative of the, uh, the hard work that's been undertaken. So the way it, it looks to us is there are two issues here for your consideration. And let me take them up uh, one at a time. The first issue is the issue of our contribution to the corridor study. And uh, you'll recall that, that you have an estimate uh, for that study of approximately $65,000 for the, uh, the entire corridor study. Uh, what we have offered uh, and offered to you past, uh, based upon the recommendations of our traffic engineer, was $5,000. And that was in excess of uh, the, uh, in, the uh, impact that our traffic would have vis-a-vis uh, uh, the entire corridor study. It was less than the five, and but we offered the $5,000. Uh, during the course of the negotiations, was made clear by the town staff uh, that we needed to do better than that. And that's the discussion that we've been having. And we, uh, as a result of that uh, discussion, uh, we have now uh, made uh, the offer and have included it in the 
draft decision of twenty thousand dollars to be our, our contribution to, to the harbor center, which we think it is imminently fair, uh, and uh, we hope that the board along with that number. There had been some discussions. We had originally proposed that what we paid uh, for the corridor study, would, we would be given a credit. First, we talked against I&I &I payments and then building permit payments for, uh, for the affordable units. The town staff made it clear that that was not something that they were comfortable with. That uh, whatever that contribution is, uh, that the contribution would be not subject to any credits. So listening to the, uh, the town staff, we then came, came back to the table with the $20,000. So the $20,000 is a result of a great deal of, of uh, back and forth to come from the, something that, that we think is fair to us and fair to the town. So that's issue number one. I believe, Andrew, that's in the, the $20,000 yes. you put in, into the uh, uh, into the body of the, yes. uh, of the decision. So that's before you consider it. The, the second issue, uh, major issue, is the issue of the uh, open space park. And uh, we all recognize that that's an important component, uh, not only to the town, but to, but to the neighbors in the area. The only problem from our point of view, we wanted to make sure that there was some kind of a vehicle, that God forbid there aren't enough parking spaces, that we could come back in the future and revisit that area. When we expressed that to, to, to the town staff, they, they, their first reaction was no, that we're making an outright prohibition of your coming back in the future, even if you identify that there's a problem with the park. We, we indicated that we needed to have that, that possibility of coming back, and in fact, the regulations allow for a modification for a comprehensive permit. So what I then suggested to the town council was for us to come back with some language that basically, if there was a problem, that basically we could come back, but we have a tremendous hurdle to overcome to substitute the parking for the open space. So what I proposed, and if you look at paragraphs E and K on pages 11 and 12 of the decision. Andrew has put our language in there for your consideration. And I'm going to read it to you. It's there in, in the text, but I want to read it uh, because I want to emphasize a couple of things. Uh, in the event that the applicant is of the opinion that the construction of the project and occupancy of the units that there exists a need for additional parking in the open space between buildings one and two. A request for such change shall be made to the board as a substantial change pursuant to 760 CMR 56074C. In such event, the applicant must demonstrate by substantial and compelling evidence such need for additional parking and overcome a presumption that such open space is an important humanity that should be preserved. So therefore, what this language does is treats the request for a change as substantial. And that would require a public hearing and a re-examination and review to know right from the beginning by the zoning board. And it would require substantial and compelling evidence that there is a need. So we're going to have to really show you that there is a need. Furthermore, and this is important, 
we would have to overcome a presumption that the open space is an important amenity that should be preserved, which is the message, of course, that we received. So, in my opinion, these requirements clearly establish a substantial barrier to the applicant's request to use the open space park for future parking. But what it does, it, it, it just gives us the opportunity to present the case. So it presents a tremendous hurdle, but it leaves open the ability for us to come back to you. But you'd have to make that decision on your own, and you would determine what we would have to come in with to, sh to show that. And rather than define that, we would leave that up to you. So that's the language that I propose, uh, which uh, I, I hope and anticipate uh, would uh, address the fact that we, we all, including staff, including the neighbors, want to keep that open space. So that, that's, uh, those were the two areas. All of the other things that Jesse can speak to them when you think it's appropriate, you know, we brought, we've worked with Andrew to bring everything up to date uh, on the parking, and maybe, maybe uh, Jesse can address that. Uh, we've gone from uh, 101 to 104 spaces. We can talk about that. But uh, uh, that's where we are on the two major issues. I don't know, but, you know, I didn't want to uh, cut you off, Andrew, but no. I just wanted to Yes, thank you for that. Ted, do you want to address the uh, addition of the three uh, compact spaces that you're proposing now, regardless of what happens but, with the um, but, but pocket? Maybe Christian will do that. <coughs> Revise the site plan set to change the parking a little bit on our lot B. Uh, lot B is the lot that contains the, the three apartment buildings. And uh, as Ted alluded to, and as you mentioned, uh, what we've done is we, we've taken a total of 27 spaces and we've changed their configuration from a standard 9 by 18 space reduce the width of the space to, to eight feet. So they're eight by 18. Uh, and by changing 27 spaces uh, to quote unquote compact size, reducing that width just by a foot, it's freed up uh, three additional parking spaces. And so on this side of the project, uh, which is the east, uh, we previously had, I believe it was, um, I believe it was 20, uh, 19, uh, excuse me, uh, 20 parking spaces. We ended up with, a, with an additional parking space uh, because we converted nine spaces along this row from the normal size to the compact size, which created uh, one new parking space. And then to keep things symmetrical, we came to the opposite side, the west side, and did the same thing along the row of parking right in here. And that added one more parking space along that row. And then finally, uh, right down here on the south side of building three, uh, we did the same thing. We, had, we changed nine spaces from regular size to compact, and that, that created one new parking space. So that's how we went from 101 to 100, uh, 101. Mm -hmm. And that's well, this building for the, for the multi family only. That's correct. And so when we take a look at the revised parking ratio, uh, the 104 parking spaces divided by the 86 units. Uh, the parking ratio just happens to work out to be exactly 1.5 parking uh, spaces per unit. And, and that is spelled out, by the way, on page 10, paragraph 11, the total parking spaces. There's 129 in the whole project, but what we're talking about here is it went from 101 to 104. That was, 
That was on uh, page, you said page 11? Page 10. Page 10. Yep, I got it. Yep. So that now is 104, which we put back in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And that, those three spaces brings us up to 104, which is representative of what ratio? 1.5. So on lot B, it's a 1.4 ratio, but for the project of a whole, it's been increased to 1.5. So the ratio uh, at the bottom is 1.41. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a record? Yeah. But we're pretty close. Right. <laughs> When we take the two parcels together, mm -hmm. brings us up to 1.5. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. Uh, any questions from the board? Yeah, I just have one question uh, uh, on this. Uh, what, what was it, the uh, size of the compact spaces? Did you mention that? Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. I, I, I missed it then. It, what are they? The standard size is 9 by 18. Right. And so the compact spaces are 8 by 18. Oh, okay. So they're not much, much now. Not much difference. Yeah. Will they be labeled as compact spaces? Yes. Yes, uh, it's a little bit hard to see at the scale, uh, but we've got them labeled and along the row uh, just how many 9 by 18s and then how many are 8 by 18. Now, which ones were addressed for? Uh, building three, just the ones in the rear, or are you talking about all three spaces? Basically, the sides. The outsides. Sure, it's just it's just this row right here. There okay. Are nine spaces uh, right in here, and they're identified with the label. These are the nine that were converted from nine by eighteen to eight by eighteen. And then the others are here. And are they going to be labeled for building numbers one and two? They're not going to be labeled, be labeled anything. Um, they're just going to be striped in that fashion. Uh -huh. um, exactly whether or not we'll identify those compact spaces, uh, that's a good question. No, I, I think we, left, we built them on each side and didn't lump them all together so that each building had some quantity of compact spaces. Right, so if somebody lived near building one, there's a compact available. Other questions from the board? No? no. This one? Okay, I see that that was that language was, was uh, corrected. I didn't know if uh, town council had put that in there or somebody else. Apparently, we got, you got together. Um, so that is addressed on there. Um, how does the board feel about that? The, uh, the comments that you made. Uh, I don't have any problem with the open, open space park language you put in. It just says you've got to come back to the board on a substantial change, which means we got to review it and approve it. Mm. I don't have any problem with that. As far as your contribution, your other issue, the contribution of the corridor study, I think, frankly, 20000 bucks is very generous, considering the fact that you're putting a new roadway and walkway into the, into the project area. So I don't have any problem yeah. with that. By the way, those in fact, I would say thank you. New roadway that come in more like 600 no, issues. Actually, yeah, more than what we originally anticipated. Mm. We think that's, that's very important to this project. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think I think I agree with Sai. Uh, very good to hear that. Come and come and do an agreement with the town on that. Yeah, really good. Nick. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo that. I think that's good news, and I'm glad to hear that contribution of 20000 And I think the language you put in here, um, even though you spelled it out, I think, like we were decided, it just makes it substantial and to come back to the board and give uh, the public some comment if they need it. Yeah, that'll give the public the opportunity to come in and, and uh, 
come Call perhaps it. criticize what, what we've done, or at least we'll do what we've done all along. We'll work together to come up with a solution. Thank you. Eric? Um, question for you, Ted. For the, um, <clears throat> the language that was, um, I guess, revised that Chris had written <clears throat> about outright rejecting, is it your understanding, I mean, I, I literally don't know the answer, is it your understanding that even if it was in there, you could come back on a <coughs> modification of that anyway? You could, because under the regulations it says that you could file for a modification, and then the regulation spells out what's substantial and, and what isn't. But we didn't want to have that in front of us, because... You know, perhaps some board in the future might say, uh, well, wait a minute, you got this language, you can never come back. We, we don't want to hear from you. And, you know, we don't want to, at that point, go to the state and have them make a rule. Sure. So that's why I took that language out, but then added all the rest of this language for the protection of the town and the protection of, of the natives. That's it. I think the last meeting we talked about that, at least uh, Chris had talked about that town council, um, that, that that option would be available to you in the future. But realistically, um, that's not going to happen for a substantial period of time if we talk about the actual construction and receiving your occupancy permits for both parcels, we're probably talking a year, year and a half maybe. So maybe 18 months and you're going to have to live with the property for a period of time before you even were to gather any of that type of data so we're talking at a substantial amount of time and this board yeah, and that's why may not I be put here that language right? in there but we can't do it until construction and until occupancy because you know then you have something in front of you okay. um, I, as the last person, which I usually reserve for myself, um, a <clears throat> comment that I had is relative to um, the traffic and the traffic study that, that you're volunteering to help finance through the, to the tune of about $20,000 for the whole, which the town, I know, needs to do. Um, that may or may not come to fruition because we have no idea what the total expense account would be to take care of that corridor. My concern um, has been from the very beginning is that Lakeview is going to be a major entrance to this project. From the time that you receive the demolition permits uh, to the time that you start and complete the project. And then after that, we're talking about the rest of what's going to happen down the line. Um, when the when it's fully, or like e at least 80% occupied, uh, coming back and in, in even addressing exactly where we are. And then the town, the town I know, I think Jane um, has, has, we're actually looking for grants to do this, and that's at least, what, a year or two down the road? Yeah, th there's some grant opportunities and some other places that we can um, definitely pursue. So it's on our radar screen. But the, my concern is really from the time that this is signed, goes forward, and actually construction or destruction uh, starts, and where are the heavy vehicles? Where is this all going to happen? Um, I don't think people, or especially early in the morning, are going to come off of uh, Salem Street onto Eaton to, to take the back way. They might be coming off of uh, uh, 128, coming down Walkersbrook and going in that way. And the major concern that I have is really a particular time of the day, like Monday through Friday from about 7 o'clock in the morning until about 8.45 or 9 o'clock when people are coming and going. Um, 
I really would have liked to have seen something in there to address that. Um, the signaling is going to be costly. Who um, pays for that? Uh, the other option is the signage, and then if nobody pays attention to the signage. So I came up with a third option. And the third option is to camera <coughs> the intersection, which would give you good data for the discussion down the road when the Walker's Brook study. But that's not real, too realistic, and some people might be very upset when they're finding themselves on camera making a left-hand turn out of uh, Lakeview and going, going towards 128. So there's only one other solution that I could think of, and I don't know how, what the reaction would be, but uh, putting some language in there that uh, during the time that we're looking for uh, the construction or whatever, can uh, assistance from excuse me, the police department uh, in putting um, an officer down there between the hours of 7 and 8.30 in the morning and what the cost of that would be until we can find out exactly where, we're, where we stand. My concern is that corridor is getting worse and worse all the time. Um, the big equipment coming in and going out there is, is an issue. Um, Delivery is an issue. Uh, and when is all that happening? It's happening early in the morning. It's happening, um, as I see, we've, we've um, reduced or, or we've, we've allowed deliveries to be made as early as 6.30 in the morning in the draft. Um, people are going to work. Uh, usually, they don't leave much before 6.30. If they leave at 6.30, there's not a lot of cars coming out of it. But by 7 o'clock, that quarter starts to gain momentum from not only, and I'd have to say this to you also, there's people who who cut from Salem Street back, even though the signage says no cut throughs between the hours of seven and nine. A lot of people that do that, uh, and where are they going? They're gonna come down to that intersection on John Street, so I just throw that out there. I don't know. I, I, I guess I'd have to ask uh, Jean, um, and that's not a fair question to that's ask. That's all right. <laughs> um, so you're talking about a police detail, essentially. Yeah, I, I know what you're getting at, and I think it's a, you know certainly a, an interesting idea. Um, the question is going to be, how much cost is that? I don't know. It's and. <clears throat> Off the top of my head, um, I don't know what a police detail costs. I, I, I know it's a lot of money, yeah. um, and they have minimums and you know. Typically, four-hour minimum. I, I don't know what the minimum is, but there's a set minimum. It's not just a matter of you know designing it in a surgical way to see if we can collect data. Um, well, I'm trying to compare that to how how we use the uh, police during that time. Of the the day too, and I know that we have um, at the schools we have um, monitors mm -hmm. out there. But usually uh, there is a one of the police um, patrol cars monitoring some of the bigger schools. Mm -hmm. um, how do we manipulate? those options at the same time. Mm. Um, I didn't, I, I've been trying to come up with something that would work because I am fearful that there's going to be an accident down there. And the accidents more so that occur, are gonna occur during the period from the time we start the, the takedown and the dem demolition to the time that we're actually doing construction and getting to the latter point of, of this, so I... I guy would like to get home. Let me, let me just, let me just address it to you, so this, I, I think your concern is a valid one, but I think I kind of piece it together to put you at ease a little bit. As it stands today, there are four, counting ours, 
four separate construction companies that work out of that land as is. And if you drive by there any day of the week, you'll see there's a number of excavators, heavy machinery, large trucks, tractors, trailers, coming in and out of and operating, and we don't have any issues. Once construction starts, those four companies are gone, right? So now you have just our flow, one company that's doing the work. So there'll actually be a reduction in the amount of constructive traffic that's occurring on that intersection. So I think if you wanted to detail it today, yeah, what would you, de you detail it tomorrow? I can I can see what you're talking about the four versus the one. The total amount of equipment is going to probably increase. Um, you, okay, but you're you're not gonna you're not gonna work one side at a time. I don't believe. Yeah. It's a good question. I was going to ask about the phasing of the construction. Well, see, we don't have any of that stuff yet, I and mean, we don't get involved in yeah. that, right. so we can't project yeah. what that's so, like. I'll, I'll, I'll map it for you. So the, the, the plan is to construct the, the buildings in three phases. We'll, we'll build the townhouses first, hopefully this year, right? So you'll do just normal residential construction there. And we're even, we've, we've been traveling the last two weeks and doing modular companies to see if we can't limit the impact of traffic, period, by having the built off-site coming on, because we have ample land, we can store modular units, and then just setting them, right? So that would really reduce the amount of traffic and impact to the neighborhood. So it's, a, it's an idea. We haven't decided it firmly yet, so we're still interviewing them, but we've been out traveling to Pennsylvania and Maine and other places looking at these units. So that's one. So once that's completed and we've done what we need to do with that, at that point we'll begin to address the two front buildings and all the site work on this on this side. Ultimately, we'd like to do it in two, in two phases if possible. If not, we'll do it in one phase. But the, the idea is to construct the two buildings first and all the site work, and then to do the, the building in the back at the end. So we will be ramping up both in occupancy and in and the level of construction and starting from the front of the property moving to the back so that the things that are going to be cluttering closer to the road are completed as quickly and as soon as possible to build periods. Okay. I, I think um, one of the things that perhaps we could do is to put a provision in the agreement and the decision that says that we would coordinate with, with staff uh, you know regarding uh, you know, construction vehicles and yeah, to uh, reduce any impact on the neighborhood. Some general language that we'd sit down and see what, what, what you know, what could be done on a day-to-day -day basis if, as, and when a problem arises. I think, you know, to have a police detail would probably make this budget uneconomic. I mean, because of the minimum time, which I believe is four hours. Mm -hmm. I think it is. And uh, you're dealing with the police union, and I think you're usually talking probably double time. It's difficult, so I, I, it's hard to commit to anything like that now. Well, I, you know, I was thinking out of, out of the box, and I wasn't thinking particularly that the applicant, which is you, are going to uh, underwrite this whole police detail. I would think that some of this is just part and parcel of the construction that we're doing in town here. Um, we've got three sites already going on. We got This will be site number four. I mean, the amount of equipment that's it's around in town, this is just magnif magnifying it. We haven't asked anybody else to do the same thing, so why would we ask you to do it? But I mean, I think it needs to be addressed somewhere along the line. And I, I, I as one member of the board, certainly would like to see it somehow addressed in here. Um, but I, and, and we, we're not gonna have sufficient time to finish this tonight. So I think that we would have some time to, to look into this and see how it could be done. But I just, this is the first opportunity we've had to bring it up. Perhaps staff could come up with some general language along the lines that I had suggested. 
So just to reiterate, in the decision, there's already conditions for a pre-demolition meeting to review your demo plan and that area, and then a pre-construction meeting as well, which requires a construction schedule and staging plan with the condition that a trucking plan also be included. So all of that is done pre-demo and pre-construction. We do that with every project. Well, that I know. That's, that puts a lot of, it's like voluntary discussion. Uh, something happens, whose head goes on the chopping block. Um, I don't think you want that to be in your ballpark. Right. So I think that if something is put in here, it's part of a contractual agreement uh, that we can come up with. Uh, I, I, I just don't know what that is. But I would like to be on the safe side rather than on the sorry side. I don't know how the rest of the board members feel about that. Well, I think we've got to face reality, and that is the fact that a construction project of this size is going to be an upset to the neighborhood as it goes on. And I'm not sure you can do a great deal about that other than try to do some commonsensical things. I mean, that would make sense to me that certainly during rush hour, morning and evening, there should not be any transport at all coming in and out of the project. Do it around those times. But uh, you're not going to solve the, <laughs> the upset for the neighborhood with this construction project. Uh, it'll be beautiful when it's done, but it's going to be uncomfortable while it's being done. I think that's something you got to face. Mr. Chair, I just want to kind of put this into perspective a little bit. This is, this, these are very small properties um, in terms of uh, site work. There's only so much equipment you can put on the property. We're talking maybe an excavator or two on one. The other property is only an acre and a half. And we, we do subdivisions of, you know, 50 and 100 lots or 100, you know, a couple hundred acres. Uh, the kind of traffic that you're thinking might come out of this thing, even during construction, is, is very minimal. Uh, you know, it's a, there are a lot of units, uh, but it, you know, essentially we're building you know up, and there's not a lot of site work uh, on the site. But, you know, I, I understand your concern, and it's certainly valid. Uh, but a site like this is a is a relatively small project from a site work standpoint, the truck and that sort of thing. It doesn't, it doesn't take much land to hold some large equipment. I mean, we've got a, we've got one project that's less than a half an acre, and there's three pieces of equipment down there right now, four pieces last time I checked. And we have another one coming that is sitting on the uh, roadway. Uh, so that, I mean, the, the, the issue, I think, is as we go along, it's going to be less, I, the, it's the initial impact, I think, uh, Matt, Ted, Jesse, uh, that you get worried about uh, when, when this project gets started. Uh, and because the corridor is such a busy corridor to begin with, um, you, you don't want to exacerbate the, the problem to the point where something is going to happen. And that's, that's my only fear. Don't let it get to that point, and the only way I can think of it. Actually, I don't perceive that uh, at the end of the day, you know, traffic at night coming in at 5 o'clock, I think that there would be no, there would be nothing unique about that. But it is early in the morning when everybody's in a rush to get to work, when they're coming home, traffic, traffic in the greater Boston area is taken care of, people getting home by 5 5.30 if they get out of work at 5. They're not going to make it in time. So I, th I think that the, the most important portion of it is, is is the early morning time, at least to start the project off, more so than anything else. And if we need something, we can go further. And if we don't need any, we back on. Just something, yeah. Jane. If, if I could, I um, spent a lot of time today looking at our construction bylaw. So it, within our general bylaw, we do regulate construction sites under a construction bylaw with stated hours and what activities can happen during that, those hours. And uh, things like noise are contemplated under that bylaw. So um, 
uh, that gives us some measure of I don't know if that technically is applied to a 40B, but if we could maybe look at that and use that as a guide for any language that we might be able to pull from there to bring into the decision, that might be one way of doing it. I think just to pick up what you said, this isn't the first time we've built something already. <laughs> right? Over the last few years, we've built many houses in that neighborhood, outside of that neighborhood, and if you talk to the building department in June, they never started or too early or weren't too late. Or, you know, we're very cognizant of that. And, uh, I think it would behoove us to continue having that good rapport with the town. I think really we have a vested interest in continuing our relationship. Well, if I don't hear any recommendations from the board, um, I, as I said before, I don't think we're going to be actually voting on this tonight. So uh, we have some time. We will have to establish a, a future uh, meeting date, which we can do a little bit later. Um, so we could leave it up to Gene and, and the community development staff. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And get a report back for our next meeting. Yep. Okay. Um, we have uh, addressed, um, in my mind, the two major elephants in the room since we started this discussion. Um, the other issues here in the draft, I mean, are, are to me, having had a little time to, to look at it, um, are appropriate. Um, I think there's little odds and ends that need to be corrected, such as the numbers, parking spaces. Um, on the waivers, I just noted um, on my uh, item that uh, mm -hmm. do we have the final control documents uh, for site plan? I know we got the architectural ones now. Uh, and where the units are going to go. Do we have the final control documents yet? As in the site plan sets? Mm -hmm. Yes, those are just delivered tonight. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's what you see on the screen. And then you also have the operations and maintenance plan for the entire site. Okay. Okay, this one I haven't seen. Yes, we just got that right as they left. Okay. But I, I just had on a number of the, the waivers just put down uh, as denoted in, in the control documents, which I think you have different wording, but it's okay. the same thing. I mean, it's just, just addressing the fact that they're located somewhere in the documents we have. And we have a, a book of documents. Um, clear on that point, Mr. <coughs> How, how fine of a grain do you want the detail to be on those references? Do you want plan sheets? Do you want uh, we get to find the approved plans? That, that, that's how it's explained. I, I think what we've done before, because um, we're not working with it on a daily basis as staff is, so the staff is looking at the control documents if they're con if they're con um, they're okay with those. I don't see a concern that. Uh, as one member of the board, I wouldn't have. I mean, that's what their job is. That's what they earn their keep by. In that um, case, I would propose to, to work with Andrew to fine tune the language and the references. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can supplement the list with the, the final version for the next hearing. Um, we haven't talked at all about the um, architectural. So if there. If there isn't anything else from the board members, um, again, we haven't had any time to go over the architectural aspect of it. And the only thing in, in my mind in the architectural is where you're locating the individual uh, affordable units, uh, which floors and all the rest of it. And I see this language in here addressing that, that you would do everything to make sure that they're not 
group together and uh, so forth and so on. And I think Mass Housing would have a problem if you did that anyways. You want to talk yeah. about that issue? I can just give you a, a brief kind of overview of, of how it's based. That'd be great. Um, Stephen Griffin from the Stephen Griffin Architects uh, Association and Chris Stephen Ed Architects. Um, um, so, so on the um, on the townhouse site, um, essentially there's after you do the calculation, there's three affordable units and. Currently, what we have located is, I don't have a site plan because we have to go back and forth, but um, essentially, there's these small units right here and here, two, two building units, and then it's the two four unit buildings. So we have the two affordables tucked in the middle here in the front building. And then on the back building of the four units, we have tucked in uh, one tucked in here. Essentially, that sort of kind of gets them between the front and back and dispersed between the type of units that we have for the townhouse units. For the 12, uh, then what we do is we do, again do the calculations and um, essentially spread them across the, the units within two 12 unit buildings and the 15 unit buildings. They kind of go all together. However, what we do is we space them out by unit type and by floor vertically. So what you'll see here is that the two 12, units, the two 12 unit buildings, um, we have on each floor, we have a two bedroom that's dedicated to being an affordable unit. And we have one one bedroom on the first floor dedicated to being uh, affordable. Then when we go to the, uh, the 50 unit building, that happens for both 12 unit buildings. When we go to the 50 unit building, uh, on the first floor, you'll see that we have a two bedroom, a three bedroom, a two bedroom, and one bedroom. And if you notice, we space them out between front and back and horizontally, so they're not all bunched up one end of the, of the building. You go to the second floor, and we have a two on this side and a one. And then on the third floor, we have the, uh, another three, a one, and a two. And on the fourth floor, we have another one and a two. So essentially, again, just spaced out horizontally, different types of units, and stacked vertically so that they, they move through the, through the product, project. Questions? Uh, does the board have any other questions? I mean, uh, we can go through the, uh, the list of waivers too, but I, I hate to get too much into this yeah. when we haven't had time to di fully digest right. this to begin with. I would suggest that the town and the developer proceed with rep, trying to do a final, what they perceive as a final draft based upon these recently submitted documents tonight. Mm -hmm. Granted, we haven't seen them, but frankly, I don't think we're going to find a lot in here that we're going to have a problem with. We've been through a lot. <laughs> We've been through this for a long period of time. And I think you're very close to the end. And so I would say, let them take these documents and assume that these are the correct finals. Put the draft together, and you and Andrew get together, and the town get together to pick up some of these nitty gritty little pieces. That's how you put it together. And then uh, in the meantime, whenever the next meeting is scheduled, we'll have that document, we'll have reviewed these, and we ought to put, we ought to be able to put the final stamp on it at that point. It's my view. I think we're very close. Very well, close. One of the things that I suggest, I mean, we've got to be careful of the open meeting lot here, so you folks, you know, aren't allowed to, you know, communicate Correct. with one another. Correct. But there's, uh, it's not a violation of the open meeting law for you to discuss it directly with Gene and with Andrew. And you know, if you have something that you have a, an issue or you want clarification on, I think it's a highly appropriate before the next meeting to communicate with Gene and, uh, and uh, Andrew uh, so that they can then discuss it with you and then we come back at the next meeting and hopefully we'll have everybody's comments because the problem is if we wait till the next meeting and then more changes have to be made, we're going to be looking at another month probably. Yeah. No, I think we, no, we, we, we'd all like to conclude. So, 
But that's my suggestion. I agree with you. Absolutely. I agree. Um, anything from uh, you, Andrew? Um, so just as you guys have said, and as the applicants have said, we worked hard on this decision. It does reflect most of the documents that you have before you tonight. There are a few minor revisions to be made still, but I just want to confirm that you guys are okay with the applicant's proposed language of the parking and that they request, if they request to come back, that's a substantial change and you're okay with the $20,000 amount that's sufficient in your eyes. Just want to confirm I, that. I think you've heard that the, the board is uh, yep. going along with that. Great. Okay, Jean. Um, I think that um, you know we've we've looked at this so for so long now. Um, you know we've, we've poured through it and had the conference calls and. The two major issues I'm, I'm glad that we, I think we've come to agreement on, um, and I appreciate the developer and the team uh, working with the town to resolve, because I know that sometimes at the end things get a little trickier, so I'm, I'm grateful that we're, we're as close as we are. Um, absolutely, if anybody has on the board has any questions, concerns, um, Andrew and I both are available and happy to compile a list of outstanding questions and maybe circle back to the team so that everyone's aware that these are some additional questions or issues that are going to be discussed at the next meeting. Okay. And then people can come prepared. Okay. As not to um, cut out the open portion of the hearing, if there are people uh, who are here this evening who uh, have a question for the applicant or for the board, um, please raise your hand, be recognized, give your name and your address. Um, I'm not going to start with you <laughs> this evening. Yes, sir. Um, Diane, my name's Diane. I live at 3 Smith Avenue. My, my only thing is that it's rather predictable that you will come back about parking because you expanded some of the units to two bedroom. Most people nowadays will have two cars per unit. And I do think it's, I think it's like a given you will come back. And, and it'll be easy to demonstrate because people will have those cars. So I just, I'm just putting that out there. And I also wanted to thank you very much, John, because I felt like you were concerned about the safety um, was exemplary. And I think better safe than sorry. I agree with you. I had never even thought about the police detail. Uh, and I noticed that there are police details in town for some of the projects. So anyway, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Can, can I say to that, we don't want to come back. <laughs> you know, the, the open space park is real nice amenities to this project. We want to keep it. Oh, okay. oh. But, but the problem is because you have spent like two bedroom units for me and usually it's not just two people. So usually when you add on a bedroom to a unit, you usually will be I think it was even pushing the envelope just by the number of units we really had on those buttons, but I'm just saying it would be naive. I, I'm not saying don't do it or it's not going to happen. I'm one person, you know, saying I think it's naive to think that these units are not going to have two cars and things coming. And I want to say we're committed to the project that we present. And I and I want to make mention of the fact that um, we asked for, at the last meeting, uh, one of the board members asked for the um, operational maintenance manual, um, which they have uh, given us this evening also, which um, I was, I'm not that fast a reader that I can understand all this in an hour and a half. But, but, the, but the, point, the point is that a lot of this is in here. I just looked at the uh, the parking regulations and so forth and so on. So I mean, this still has to be reviewed, and I don't even think that uh, Andrew has uh, had a chance to go through that whole thing either, uh, because again, we just got it today. So it's it's, it's going to take some time for us to go through all of this. 
Somebody else had a question? Right. No, no further questions. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Uh, so I want to thank um, the development team for the effort to increase the parking spaces without sacrificing the park. This compact space they need is great. So thank you for adding uh, the extra spaces. And that gives me hope that despite the two bedroom units, maybe we can live within the 1.4. And I think the studies show that parking is going down. So I'm a little bit more optimistic now. <laughs> maybe you guys can convert more parking to the compact size going forward so thank you for that uh, i have so i have two questions so my first question is about the manual the operations and maintenance manual i was wondering why on the pictures you have there why do we see parking and not pocket park in, in those uh, drawings so i hope it's not uh, i don't know who is supposed to consume this manual or like who is it the yeah, no, i can I try so it's, it's just snapped from the existing. OK, but it's not like suggesting there is a parking there. <laughs> the parking is in the writing of their approval, right? So we right. putting a picture in there just to I, I, well, I used the same picture each time. Okay. I was identifying loading zones. I was identifying uh, snow removal, and right. I mean, it was just it's just showing pattern of traffic or a specific demarcation point for something. But they're going to ultimately okay. tell me, yes, you can have your park, and yes, you can have your birthday. So I would love just uh, once we that, so if you guys put some effort into uh, designing it, then we. Can. Again, it's like cards before the horse. We've got to give the approval to go build, and then we'll go put a design on there. All right. Uh, okay. So the other issue is something that came up during the conservation hearings. I just want to put it out there because I heard actually from a couple of people from the neighborhood where they have concerns. So the way that uh, Lakeview goes says, uh, uh, between the two lots, and then it ends up with some stairs going into the wetland. So what people are concerned, that's kind of, this is an invitation for young people to go there, do drugs or something. <laughs> uh, so there were questions, can you, you need those stairs really going to the wetland? Uh, and can you say private property or something? And actually, uh, Jesse said they cannot close it because it's a private wise, uh, people need that. But I thought maybe I should bring it up here because it's like you have under the round stairs down the wetland, this big wall across. So I don't know, I don't think it's really a recreational area, but I can see how people can go to do things they're not supposed to because we've seen it around the wetlands, you find needles and such. So I just was wondering if we can kind of talk a little bit about this. Do we really need the stairs? Or can we at least put signs there like it's... We have the, the final um, uh, write-up from the conservation. We haven't seen it. Um, they, they, didn't, they didn't want it, but then they just have no issues. Yeah. I mean, the, there's particular issues that, that, that have to be addressed. No. Uh, I don't think we don't have anything. We don't have anything. It's not necessarily a function of technical weather. Exactly. No, I don't think we do. We don't have any copies of permits or anything. An area that was pointed out as part of the community that is a way to get down to the wetland area. It was really something that needs to be brought up. So they actually said maybe well, this could afford is the place to discuss it. So I'm, I'm, say, I'm not terribly concerned about it, but I mean, people are raising it, and I'm not sure what the role of the stairs really is. And uh, it was a good idea. Can I show you where there is? Sure. Yeah. Andrew, would you put that down on your list? Uh, so, already there. I don't like you have new. Uh, the distance between um, this line and this line represents the right-of-way of uh, Lakeview Avenue. And the right-of-way of Lakeview Avenue comes all the way down to here. Right. Yeah. Uh, beyond this is, uh, this is property owned by Jordan Square, I'm sure. Okay. So that's, that's private property. Uh, but this is uh, the entire length of the right-of-way. And uh, the set of stairs that we're talking about that are located here, because it's a retaining wall along this section, did not uh, want to block access uh, for folks that have rights to 
pass and repass over Lakeview, uh, even into the small area here. So that's the purpose of this short staircase. Thank you. I think it becomes a public road with the trees. Well, I think what we're going to do is we're going to let Andrew research that with conservation, and we'll, we'll have something back the next time we meet. Yeah, this, this was something we brought up with, at the conservation hearing, and, and Chris is, is right, because it's a private way, the way it works under the law is because we own the property on both sides of the way. We own, we technically own the land that's under the way, subject to the rights of everyone who's on that way, including all the way down to Walker's Brook Drive, to use it all the way to its end. So by, as a matter of law, we're not allowed to block anyone else's access. And if we did it, they could come to land court and say, you're blocking my access to use this way, even though it is a way to nowhere. So it, it, it's... Well, the, I think the comment that was made was, that when this is accepted as a public way, right, right. that may change that. Right. And I'm sure that during the construction period, the first thing that's not going to be built is the uh, retaining wall and the stairs. That's right. So that would be at the end of the project, and if the town accepts accepts the right of way, then maybe this will not be done. But I mean, that's why I'm, I'm asking uh, Andrew to, to do the research on it and give us some feedback next meeting. Jane. Yeah, um, one idea is to um, capture what you just said about going from a private way to a public way and putting a placeholder in the decision that says if and when that happens, the expectation is that the staircase would be eliminated from the plan. And that way, it's it, it's in there as a as a reminder, as a placeholder. You mean in addition to what we have now in our draft, put it in there. Put that in as an additional reminder, placeholder, on this issue. Sounds realistic. Then we don't have to make it too fancy, and but we'll have it in there to. Well, all of, our, it. all of the rest of the. Um, not all of the input that we have received from all staff members in town as required by 40B are in this draft. Some of it is referred to, and so there's a document that gives you the contractual agreement that refers to other documents. So I think Gene's recommendation to do this uh, is perhaps uh, very appropriate in this particular situation. Because uh, we, we're not there yet, so you can't control it yet. But as a place reminder mm -hmm. to us, uh, it can be elevated mm -hmm. to the actual contract. Can I just put one, one more point? About going back to the question on the police detail and the deliveries, um, I've had a lot of experience with this at some of the other projects. And um, the police department works daily with developers do, during construction. And they're very much, I'm very impressed with how spot on they are at requiring a police detail at those times when those deliveries are coming. Um, so I, I, I feel very confident that we have a mechanism in place more as a, a, a police matter once we get going on the construction um, to work through any issues related to deliveries and vehicles and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering if it might be helpful for me to get something from either the deputy chief mm -hmm. to include somewhere, maybe in the materials someplace, well, we of how that, that works. We have that already on there, so okay. the, 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 the police uh, response, They're responding. It's, in, it's in the draft, so okay. we can just add another paragraph to it. We could expand that maybe a little mm -hmm. bit, just to give everybody, again, a little more comfort on how that might work. Okay. Yes. Uh, David Cannon, 30 Beach Street. Um, I had one thought about this, the traffic monitoring on Lakeview and, and the Walker's Brook intersection. Um, on some other areas around town, particularly Green Street and Main Street, the police department has done what's called directed patrol. So they have a cruiser sitting in a location nearby to watch for uh, traffic violations and safety concerns. And that might be something that the town could talk with the police mm -hmm. deputy chief or chief about. Um, doesn't really cost anything extra because they're already on duty. 
so it might be an option for us. Again, Gene can follow that up. Mm -hmm. We will have something for our next <laughs> meeting. Anyone else? Yes. Um, I have a question about visitor parking. Um, it's my understanding there's going to be a room that they can rent out and have the people in the car be 40 friends. Where are these 40 friends parking? Are they going to be parked in front of the house or are they going to have allocated spots to park? They're not building a function hall, so I don't think there's definitely not a function hall. There's a community area. The design and intent of that area is to be more of a uh, um, more like a conference room type of feel. If somebody needed to within the project, more business related, types of live there or uh, uh, be a small TV area. But it's really the design and intent of that is never. They would have to have approval for the visitors in advance. And you'll see that that's in uh, maintenance and operation. You know, that, you know, we're going to have to approve the visit part. We have to come mm -hmm. and submit for a permit, you know, up to a week in advance because of the visit. So we'll be controlling that to make sure that that's not the case. Okay, so I'm using language from the previous meeting that yes. they said 40 consistent for a flat stock. Yeah, we'll put it all. <laughs> yeah, our biggest concern is making sure that our residents have parking. So if we allow 40 visitor spots, somebody comes up to work, they don't have a place to park. Then we're towing cars. So we're going to have a great time. I think you're going to have more of uh, the overflow of you know, people that are parking on the side of the street yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah, and that's, and that's our concern too, and why we asked for that language. And, you know, if we end up having to build that additional park, yeah, but we don't want to cause the issue. Is it going to be the same as the townhouses as well? Because we're going to run the How many townhouses? Do you want to explain uh, how many townhouses? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so on the townhouse uh, side of the project, uh, there are 12 units, and you know, there's a there's a driveway that sits in front of the garage. And each, of, each of the units, each of the units has a one car. Each of the units has a one car garage. So each one of these guys has a one car garage. And so what we've done is we, we count that one garage space as one of the spaces, and then the space that's not in front of the garage door is the second space. So each of the units has two spaces, but uh, by definition, if someone were to have a, a small family gathering or something like that, we would fit another car in front of uh, each of the buildings. And so there are 12 additional uh, parking spaces that are available that aren't counted in our parking count, uh, in addition to uh, these four spaces over here that are community spaces and then the one accessible space. So uh, I'm not really too concerned about, about the, 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 the townhouse port, uh, portion of the project. There's more than enough uh, parking over here, and it actually <coughs> complies with the, I believe, the zone requirement where we have to do our parking ratio over yeah. here. Sure, thank you. Uh, one of the things that the, uh, the police department asked us to do as well is, um, is to provide uh, you know, parking signs at various locations along the frontage of our project, not only <coughs> the uh, townhouse project, but, uh, but even over in this area here, uh, to make sure that people understand that the, uh, the police department doesn't want folks parking on the street. Put them on the opposite yeah, side of the street. Yeah, put them on our side. side. <laughs> oh, well, um, you know, we haven't, uh, we haven't shown, I don't think, anything on that side of the street. Uh, because uh, that's not uh, in front of our frontage, uh, but if that's something that the police department uh, would like us to do, we can add a couple more signs. Uh, the other thing is, we don't want to go sign crazy either. Uh, people, people start becoming sort of immune to signs. You know, the more signs it's about parking, the more have to. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing no other uh, response or uh, indiv individuals looking to respond, I'm going to close the subject matter of, uh, for this evening anyways, uh, the public hearing section. Um, we now have uh, to look at what our next meeting date is going to be. Um, our next... The earliest we could meet again would be the 28th, which would be a Thursday, because Wednesday uh, is the 4th, which is uh, um, 
conservation? Yes, but this project is off of conservation yeah, now, through. so that's not an issue for conservation needs. Um, well, the, the question I have is whether this is the 27th or the 28th, is that sufficient time for us to look forward, or do we need to move to I the would following ask month? The same. So I will tell you now, you cannot hold the 40B on March 6th, your regular schedule Correct. hearing, and you cannot hold it on the 20th. That's too late. And we have applications on that date, um, March 20th. So if you think a week is enough time for you guys to digest this all and us to get all the supplemental material and revisions, I'm happy with that, but if you want to aim for the 7th or so of March, we could do that. As well. well, if you can do your homework, the, the board, I think, has already agreed to do their homework, and they all are available to meet next Wednesday, the 27th, mm -hmm. unless you think the 28th is the better date. I think the 27th is fine. Okay. When did you want anything that we come up with as a draft? Like when... Um, well, you only have tomorrow, <laughs> and you have Monday and Tuesday of next week, so you only have three days to work on it. Right. Is that sufficient time for you? I think we can probably get this done. I think so, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assuming there's no other issues from the board. Well, would it be interest? Would it be nice to task the board people to say, okay, if you get any comments to this material we got tonight, that it's in their hands by Monday morning? That, that's yes. Yeah. Please. If you don't hear from any of us by Monday morning, we don't have a problem. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that fair enough? Is it possible for people yeah. to be able to make this draft? Yes. I'm going to post a few things tomorrow, yep. seven in the morning. It'll yep. be up there. It will be before yeah. the meeting. We'll have it done and posted. Okay, but be nice to yep. like tonight. It was just a moment. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I apologize for tonight. Uh, yeah, we'll get it up there. Ted, your team so is I, available. I then on think we need two weeks. That's my. By the time you give some comments back to them, and then you know we go through it. And make changes in the community. I, I think one week isn't going to be enough time, but that's... Well, uh, here's, the, here's our problem. Um, next week is the 27th or the 28th. The following week um, is the 1st in March, and we already have three cases that we're listening to. So that date is out. So the 6th of March is, is gone. The only other date is the 13th, because the 20th we have additional cases coming up which is part of our regular hearings so the only other day would be the for us we have two other hearings I already yeah I think we, I don't think we have any other choice um, uh, no that's past your 30 days yes. well that's what we're, we're asking Yes. Yeah, that's where I think it's short. I think we worked through the heavy lift. Mr. Chair, if I could. Yes. Um, I will be tied up the first two Wednesdays in March with budgets with the Finance Committee. So I won't be available those Wednesdays. Well, the first is, is the, uh, the sixth, and the other one is the 13th. Yep. So I won't be available the 13th. Okay. And many people will be at those finance committee meetings for the budget. So if you want to do the 28th to give us an extra day, it's a Thursday, but we can do it. Well, what about the 14th, which is Thursday? <coughs> is that going to give us enough time to file with the clerk? I, I, my preference is to do it next week. I, I, I think we can get this done. I think we are so close. As long as the board can get us comments by Monday, Monday morning, we'll have it all queued up. And I think we should just do it. Because March you starts... Are talking the, the tw Thursday, the 28th? No, the, mm -hmm. we the yeah. Wednesday. Or Wednesday. It's a Thursday. I think it's a Thursday. It's the 27th. The 27th is a Wednesday. We, both of us have hearings already on... on the I thought we were talking about the 27th. 
20 inch. Uh, dear. So, what are, what are the dates that we're actually looking at now? <laughs> we're talking about Wednesday the 27th of February or Thursday the 28th of February. That's what I mean. Either Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Yes. Uh, yeah, 28th of February. Yeah, that's and we all said that we were available we're also on the 28th. 28th. Right. So we've already taken a, and we're, we're available on the 28th, so if okay. we can get you the uh, the information by Monday, yeah. let's say Monday noontime, just yeah. in case. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. So that's, that sounds fine for the board? Yep. Yep. Okay. And then we'll get it up to them Tuesday? Yeah. Yep. Monday. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be here at seven o'clock, right? Yep. Okay. Same same spot right here. Yeah. Okay. Do I motion to that effect? I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, for the twenty eighth would be the next meeting. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. We're we're set up for next Thursday, uh, the twenty eighth, here in this room at seven o'clock. Got it. Okay. Do we have any other business before the board this evening? Hearing none, do I hear another motion? To adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a second? I'll second. Okay, five zero zero.